Hey guys, I hope you're well. So today's video is going to be a true crime video. I've been super obsessed with watching true crime videos on YouTube at the minute. This case has just been really close to where I'm living at the moment. I really wanted to cover this case because I've just been fascinated with it since it happened. So... Oh, I got a sweaty lip. So today's video is going to be the true crime solved case of Tiali Palmer. Tiali Palmer was a 12 year old girl at the time of her disappearance and murder living in Logan area of Queensland, Australia. Tiali was described as being a bubbly, like creative, very like friendly, outgoing little girl. She was loved and adored by everyone that knew her and she always made lots of friends very quickly. She attended Marsden State School here in Queensland. Unfortunately due to her mother Cindy being involved in a severe case of domestic violence and abuse, Tiali was placed in the foster care system at a young age. She went from a few different short-term families and actually I just want to backtrack. The foster care system here in Australia basically has two types. So you've got like short-term uh, foster caring and long term and obviously or long term or permanent and obviously they pretty much are self-explanatory. The short term is, you know, short term accommodation that they go to while their biological families fix their current situation and when it is deemed safe for them to return back to their biological families, they can do so. Whereas the permanent option of foster caring is um, basically what it states, it's permanent. They go under the care of another family and are unlikely to return to their real family. A lot of people will get put in this due to, you know, their parents passing away, drug addiction, that kind of thing. Um, and yeah, unfortunately for Tiali, this was the case. She was placed into the care of a family in 2015 named the Thorburn family. The Thorburn family consisted of Rick Thorburn, Julian Thorburn, and their two sons, Trent and Josh Thorburn. They lived in like a rural kind of property um, in Logan area of Queensland. To everyone that knew Tiali outside of, I guess, the Thorburn family, they described her experience there as unpleasant. They said that she didn't want to live there, she was constantly running away from home, constantly not showing up for things, you know, she didn't enjoy actually being under the Thorburn's care. Uh, and this went on for, I think it was about 10 months, most resources say, um, which is, I mean, that's kind of concerning, but yeah. And what's actually quite interesting is that Cindy placed Tiali in the foster care system herself. She went to the department for help, which, I mean, some people scrutinize her over that, but I personally think that that's just like... She knew that she was in a bad situation and she knew that the safest option for her daughter was to be placed under someone else's care, which kind of really makes me, like, it breaks my heart because, you know, she was trying to do the best thing for Tiali and unfortunately the outcome wasn't what she had wanted. So with the foster care system in Australia, you have a few different criteria to be able to become a foster care parent or guardian. You have to be over the age of 18. You have to have some relevant life experience. You have to have a decent house and decent income. So to me, that kind of sounds like, I mean, very basic criteria. They do say that you need background checks as well. So Rick and Julie Thorburn owned a few different businesses. They had a like at home childcare center. They had like a small food truck business as well. The kind of family dynamic from the outside looked very like typical Aussie family, very happy, very functional, just kind of living their life. But behind closed doors, that wasn't really the case. Everywhere that I've read kind of states that Josh, Trent, and even Jolene were somewhat scared of the father Rick. He had a very, you know, had a very like dominant demeanor and Josh and Trent were both quite afraid of him to the point where they would pretty much do anything to not have him get angry. On Friday the 30th of October 2015, Tiali didn't show up for school. The school called Rick to inform him and Jolene that she hadn't shown up for school that day. It's actually not unusual for Tiali to not show up for school. As I said earlier, she didn't enjoy living with the Thornburns, she was constantly running away, you know, she'd wag school sometimes, she'd not come home, things like that, just because she didn't enjoy going there and living there. So this was, I guess, not 
out of the ordinary for her. And Cindy at first didn't really think much of it. She thought that, oh, you know, it's just another one of her situations where she's run away and she'll be back. But after a day or so passed, Cindy got a gut feeling that, you know, something was wrong. Approximately six days after her disappearance, fishermen on the Pipima River in Queensland discovered a body. Unfortunately, that was the body of Tiali Palmer. There was a few different leads, but nothing really strong enough to convict anyone. Immediately, the police turned to Rick, but his reaction was just super suspicious. So when the school had called Rick to notify him that Tiali was missing, he broke down. He was like sobbing, crying, saying like, no, like, where is she? Which like rang alarm bells straight away, as you can imagine. As I said previously, she had constantly been running away from home. It wasn't out of the ordinary for her to be missing. And for his reaction to immediately be like hysterical is just like, what are you doing? Like, obviously that was suspicious because he didn't know that the worst could possibly be happening. Like maybe she just didn't want to go to school that day. Maybe she went to a friend's house. Like how did he know and why was he so hysterical straight away? Like wouldn't you be like, okay, like let's look around. Like I would do the drive by, you know, that kind of thing. Your immediate first response wouldn't be, oh my God, what has happened to her? So police immediately targeted Rick. They were like, he's suspicious. He's acting really out of character. Um, he's obviously got something to do with it. But the family created a load of lies. They had nothing to do with this. Um, and six months had passed. It wasn't until the next year that any major leads came in. There's a hotline in Australia called Crime Stoppers. And basically, if you're not from Australia and you don't know what that is, it is a hotline that you can contact if you are like a witness or you've seen anything that's kind of out of the ordinary that may lead to something being solved in a case. You know, if you were in the area on the night of something happening and you saw someone or whatever it is, you can call them and you can make an anonymous statement. So Crime Stoppers actually had an anonymous anonymous what? So Crime Stoppers actually had an anonymous tip off from an anonymous person that stated that Trent had made some groundbreaking Facebook messages to his cousin. The messages from Trent to his cousin stated that he had in fact had sexual intercourse with Tiali and that he fears that she may be pregnant. Trent also said that he just wanted her gone and that they were going to have a family meeting to discuss the matter. Now for police when they found this out like obviously that gives motive now. They have a motive you know, he was involved in an illegal sexual relationship with Tiali. She was, whether it was consensual or not, he was 18 and she was just 12 years old. So, so when they had this lead, they immediately thought, okay, the Thorburns have just lied. Like, they have something to do with this now. And I just want to say, like, if you have a massive secret on this kind of scale, like you slept with someone that's 12 years old and you are 18, you don't go messaging no matter who it is, whether it's your relative or not, you do not go messaging people on Facebook about it. Like, I'm sorry, but how stupid can you be? Like, Facebook is not a secure place. People find things out on Facebook. You can learn that the hard way. Like, seriously. So this is when police really began, I guess, planting things that would give them more evidence. They put recorders around... I don't know what they call it, recorders? Yeah. Around the Thornburn's house to record their conversations and this is where they found so much more evidence so they heard all these conversations between the family of rick saying tiali's gone i hope you understand what that means and this is just like like if my dad ever said that to me i would be like i'm sorry what and this is where the family's lies start to i guess unravel and things start to fall apart so police began to check CCTV for the morning of Tiali's disappearance. Rick had curated a story saying that he dropped Tiali off at 10 past 8 at school and for about 30 to 40 seconds he sat in the car watching her talk to a friend as they walked off. He then said that he ran a couple of errands and came home. Police checked the CCT footage of that area and they found some inconsistencies with Rick's story. So they used um, I guess car tracking you could say where they would see a car pass in the CCTV footage and they would have like the timer on it and then they'd see Rick's blue Mazda pass 
a certain amount of seconds later. So they kept checking different CCTV footage cameras and they noticed that it was really consistent in all of them. What they picked up on is that Rick's Mazda was seven seconds behind a white van that passed through each camera. When they added that all up with the timings on the cameras, they found that it was impossible for him to have stopped for 30 to 40 seconds or even stopped at all at the Marsden State School, which means that he didn't drop Tiali off at school at all and he probably didn't even see her that morning. So that's the first major lie. Rick's just made a statement saying that he was here at this time and this is what he did in the morning and now they knew that that was actually false. And then that ties the rest of the family in with it as well because they've all just agreed with his story and gone along with it and they've just proven that it's not correct. As you can probably imagine where this story is going, Rick Thorburn murdered his foster child, Tiali Palmer. The way in which police could, I guess, convict Rick of the crime, regardless of all this evidence that they had built up against him, was actually questioning Jolene and Josh. Jolene and Josh came clean. They couldn't keep it a secret any longer. They'd been hiding this for months and months. Josh had stated that Rick had told him that Tiali's gone and I hope you know what that means. Immediately, Josh broke down to police and told them the rest of the story. It's pretty clear that Rick murdered Tiali to cover up the fact that she may be pregnant with his son Trent's child. And Trent and the whole family knew that if he was caught having a sexual relationship with Tiali, that he would be serving jail time. And Rick did not want this. He did not want his son going to jail. Jolene then also came clean. She said that she left for her sister's house on that night and that Tiali spent a matter of hours alone with Rick. There's no real resource that says that she knew this was going to happen. I mean, she could be lying. We don't really know. But she says that she had no indication that this was going to happen and that she would never have left the house if she knew that that was going to be the outcome. But like, I mean, if he had said, like they just had this conversation about how Trent had just slept with her, he'd come clean to his parents and told them everything. And obviously Rick was angry and she goes and leaves her alone in the house with him. And might just add that Rick has had a previous history with violence. You know, he bragged to Cindy, which is Charlie's mother, that he had, you know, been in gangs before and that he'd dealt with prostitutes and all this kind of thing. So, like, what? Like, how can you not... How can you trust him? Like, I just don't understand. This part just breaks my heart because she really had no chance. Like, she was a 12-year-old little girl on a rural farm with a man that just found out this information and probably despises her at this point and like I just can't imagine the like fear Ugh. what makes this case even more sick is that when they held a funeral for Tiali the Thorburns attended Rick carried her casket there's literally photos of him carrying it at her funeral and he was crying and hugged Cindy it was just acting so distraught and so like like he cared and that just makes me so angry because how could you do that like this poor mother has just had a funeral for her murdered daughter under your care and you've rocked up and you've sobbed and you've hugged her and you've carried her casket like I just like what all four family members were arrested a year after Tiali's murder. Three of them were found guilty, that being Jolene, Trent and Josh for perjury and attempting to pervert the cause of justice. Rick Thorburn was found guilty for murdering 12 year old Tiali and he is facing life in prison with the possibility of parole. Rick will not be eligible for parole until September of 2036. Trent Thorburn was sentenced to four years in jail for incest, perjury, and attempting to pervert the cause of justice. He was released in late January of 2018 after serving just 16 months. It has also been revealed that Thorburn's actually operated their family daycare center for six months after Tiali went missing. Like, they had children under their care for six months after she went missing. I don't understand that and like from the interviews I've watched of her mom Cindy, she was disgusted by that. Like I totally agree with Cindy that she was saying like regardless of whether they did it or not at the time, that, well, <laughs> they should have, you know, intervened and stopped the daycare center until they had more evidence and that they had a result. Like 
I just don't understand how you could let that happen. And just recently, a court has adjourned um, for charges against Rick that he supposedly has molested or sexually abused two girls under the age of 12 that were attending the daycare in their house. And I just can't believe that these kinds of people were eligible to become foster parents. Like, that just blows my mind. Like, that is so scary. These people haven't even had proper background checks. There's no one that's really monitoring their actual life at home. And that just freaks me out. Like, it really does. And I just feel so... Sorry for Tiali and her family. So in conclusion of this case, Queensland's like child protective system has actually amped up their, I guess, administering of foster care RIS. When you apply, there are way more strict conditions that you have to pass before you can be eligible to be a foster carer, which I think is so necessary. If this is not the perfect example of proper background checks, then I don't know what is. Watching the videos of Cindy, in my personal opinion, I don't think that she was in the wrong for putting Tiali in the foster care system. I mean, she's under a lot of scrutiny saying that she's partially responsible for her murder, which I just think is disgusting. This mother was in such a bad position in life. Let's just put it that way. She was in a really bad circumstance and she was brave enough to go to them herself and put Tiali in what she thought was going to be better care. And I just think that that takes so much guts. Like, I don't think she's in the wrong at all. And it breaks my heart that she would receive any kind of blame or scrutiny for that. As a mother, yeah, she had problems and she could have done better with certain things. But I think at the time when you're facing those kind of life struggles that she was facing, I think the decision that she made was the best possible decision for Tiali. I think what actually failed Tiali is the system. If the system had proper investigation and proper um, strict application processes for foster caring and even running a childcare center, I feel like she would never have had this happen to her. So that's it for today's video, guys. I really hope you're having a good day wherever you are. Um, my heart just goes out to Tiali and the family. You know, her life was cut so short and she had so much going for her and so much ahead of her and it just breaks my heart. But I just really wanted to share this story because I feel like a lot of stories in Australia don't really make it kind of around the world and I feel like they should because I feel like they're just as important as other stories elsewhere. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up because that really helps me out. Just want to encourage everyone to stay safe wherever you are. I hope you have a great day. Bye.